Well, this week we officially concluded the month of January. It's been a cold and in many places snowy winter thus far. Combine that with the drought that we faced in 2022, and now hay inventory is becoming a challenge for some producers. Margaret Journal's Mike Straub recently asked Nebraska Extension educator, a Nebraska Extension educator, about the hay situation and some of the extra costs that producers can expect to pay. With the cost of feed and production on the rise, as well as the drought situation, you may need to purchase hay to provide feed for your animals. Outside of sticker price, there are other important aspects to consider before bringing hay from a new cellar or area onto your operation. This year has been a dry year. We've had um, decreased production for a lot of feedstuffs. Costs have been up. Um, you know, hay prices are up as well, but sometimes we just need to have something to feed our animals, especially um, with the recent weather that we've had across the state. You know, we've had a couple of really heavy snows. We've had really cold temperatures, and, and sometimes we just need something to get to those animals. That way uh, we have a, a calf crop this year and, and we're able to rebreed for next year. And so, um, you know, any time that we are facing a shortage or a gap, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the options, you know, right away that we need to go look at is, um, you know, before we start selling off animals, can we balance it the other way by bringing some feed resources onto our place? Um, and that's, you know, one of those things that, you know, the reason for this interview is when we start to do that, um, we're talking a lot of times we look at the, the sticker price of that, you know, how much is it going to cost me for my pocketbook? Um, but there's some additional costs a lot of times that can come with bringing hay onto our place that we need to be aware of. Making sure that hay you're purchasing is being tested is highly recommended. There are many factors that can affect the quality of the product, even when the hay is from the same field and harvested at the same time of the year. Testing hay is uh, going to be a recommendation across the board. Um, a lot of times if we are purchasing from a, you know, a, a hay broker or somebody who's sold hay in the past, they might have that hay test done ahead of time for you. Um, and that's just a, a good faith effort on their part. Hay is never going to be the exact same every single year in a row. We might harvest it at the exact same date um, from the exact same field. And there's going to be differences depending on precipitation, depending on, you know, just the, the temperatures and things that year, so maybe a little bit of you know, what we have for species makeup, the maturity of the plants, we're going to have swings. You know, we could have up to a, a 5% difference in, in crude protein content sometimes in, in some of our hays, and that can make a really big difference, even though it's the same hay harvested off the same field. And so getting that hay test just ensures us that we know what we're actually purchasing. Um, because it does make a difference if we're buying, you know, prairie hay that's at 5% crude protein versus 9%. Um, how we feed that, who we're feeding that to, um, how that fits into our operation makes a big difference. And so we don't necessarily want to be purchasing 5% crude protein hay for the same thing that we're going to be purchasing, you know, um, a little bit higher quality hay. And, and a lot of times, you know, you can look at the, the hay visually and, and get a good assessment of, you know, which way it's going to trend, but that's not always, you know, a surefire answer. So getting that hay test is, is really important. The possibility of bringing invasive plants, insects, and rodents onto your operation should be considered. Being aware of the risk and a thorough inspection of the hay can ensure a quality purchase. A right of refusal with your provider should be put in place. Um, it's always really important if we are getting a load of hay in um, to make sure that we're inspecting it and to also just be aware of some of those risks that we might be you know, bringing on. Um, where is this hay coming from? What are maybe some of the risk factors in that area? Uh, if we're bringing it from a long ways away, um, we've got some invasive species that, that we might have some concerns about. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, North and South Dakota have had a steady creep of absinthe wormwood that's been coming down into Nebraska. Um, we saw a, a really big, you know, increase in that after uh, 2019 and, and, you know, some of the um, flooding spread some of those seeds around and, and some of that actually came in before that during some of the drought years in, in 2012. Uh, just we we're purchasing hay, we get it fed out, that seeds in that hay and all of a sudden it's established onto our operation. So just being aware of what some risks might be. So that way when you look at that hay we can say, um, you know, this looks a little bit iffy we need to keep an eye on it um, if we can, you know, have, retaining that right to refuse hay if it comes in and it looks like it's really full of weeds. Um, and that's not what we agreed to. Um, we agreed to a high quality hay and it does not look like what we, we decided to purchase on. Um, having that right of refusal is, is going to be really important. Um, and the last thing on, on the side of invasives is um, it's not always plants either. 
you know, we can bring in um, alfalfa weevil um, onto our place. Um, we can bring in things like, uh, you know, if we're getting, you know, really down into the southern part of the states, uh, bring fire ants um, up sometimes. Um, you know, those won't necessarily last a long time up here in, in our cold winters, but if we um, have them protected in hay, you know, if we have a mild winter, um, it, they might be able to survive throughout the summer and then, you know, die off next year, and that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. Um, you know, there's even cases where we brought rats onto our operation that we haven't had before, um, you know, have come in on a load of hay. So uh, keeping an eye out for any unwanted, um, you know, uh, animal species is important as well. As important as hay testing is before or after purchase, there are several other aspects for producers to consider. Hopefully producers have a good idea of how much hay they need this year and, and you know, have purchased what they are able to or, or what they need so far. Um, you know, it's always a, a good idea to have a good stock of your inventory. Um, again, doing hay tests on what you have, you know, what you've produced, what you've brought on, so that way you can develop a plan how you're going to best utilize that in your, your feed rotation um, and make sure that we're getting the most out of it, especially this year where hay's tight um, and it's really pricey. We need to make sure that we're utilizing the best that we can in our operation. Hay tests, a good inventory of hay on hand as well as what's needed, and a utilization plan are all important considerations when purchasing hay for feed. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Mike Straub.